All right, let's talk self-doubt. Self-doubt is pointless. It verges on pity and it will claim your life and make you live a sedated, safe, useless life that you eventually regret. There's no benefit to self-doubt. So you have one body of one life. If you believe you can achieve anything, there's a massive upside because you're going to pursue those things that you want to pursue. If you think you can't do those things that you want to do internally, you're not going to try. You're not going to do the work. You're going to be lazy. You're going to procrastinate. Procrastination isn't about being lazy. It's about not believing that you can do what you want to do. If you believe in the things that you're doing, that they would result in the results that you want to get in achieving your dreams or whatever, you do them. If there's a guarantee that if I did X, Y, Z, it would make me a billion dollars. Even if it took 10, 20 years, you would do X, Y, Z. So the belief creates the action, but without that belief, it's useless. Living your life standpoint, a lack of belief or self-doubt is utterly useless. So then how do we get self-belief? One part's of rationalizing it. If you believe in a God, I believe in a God. Would that God put the these dreams and desires into you and then make you incapable of achieving them? I don't think so. What kind of torturous being is that? That That's the worst thing that we could have. Imagine you've got a desire to build a business and you're incapable of doing it because you're too stupid. It doesn't exist. Whatever your desires are, uh, Stephen Pressfield said, it's the truest calling of your existence. Ambition is your soul telling you what to do, essentially. Those weren't his words, but those are along the lines of his words. Ambition is your soul telling you what to do. So those dreams and desires desires is your internal being telling you what to pursue. Sometimes they're fake. Sometimes they're what society tells us we want to do. But when they're true and grand and audacious, that is our soul telling us why we're alive and what we're here to pursue. And pursuing your potential is the truest expression of your existence. Jordan Peterson said that. So the actions that the disciplines, the hard work that depend on belief, that is the truest form of living. That is an expression of being alive, being lazy, quitting, pitying yourself. That is, that's a sin. If you, whatever, like even if non-religious, slap in the face of the odds of you being here. The odds of you being here are one in a trillion, one in trillions. So being here is a gift. And when you get a gift, a really good gift, you use it, you enjoy it, you make the best of it. And the way we do that is by pursuing our goals, pursuing our dreams. The way we pursue them at our best is by believing in ourselves. So what if you lack self-belief? What if you have self-doubt? That's where you got to be careful because self-doubt converge on self-pity. When you don't think you can do something, you say, oh, poor me. I've got these goals. I've got these desires, but Billy over here can do it. Bobby over there can do it, but I don't have the ability to do it. And you start pitying yourself. And that is a fucking weak existence that you can't call yourself a man if you have self-pity. You're cutting yourself off at the knees. You're feeling sorry for yourself and you're looking for some handout, some gift. If you want something in life, look internally. Don't look externally. Everyone else is trying to figure out their own shit. They're trying to figure out their own life. They're trying to make their own way. They don't care about you. They don't care about what you're doing, what you're wearing, what you're thinking, what you're pursuing. They're focused on their shit. You have to be focused on your shit. That's the reality of life. There is no handout coming to rescue you. You have been given the abilities to rescue yourself. So we have belief in ourselves, or we have self-doubt. In the end, they're both a choice. You have to hammer it into your head that you're the fucking man, that no matter what it is you're trying to pursue, no one can do it better than you. There isn't a person on the planet that can do what you are trying to do if it's unique to your talents and your interests. Because there is only one you. There is only one existence, one life. You're one set of DNA, one set of beliefs, one set of thoughts. There isn't a duplicate of you. So no one can do what you're trying to pursue. And the belief has to be there. If it isn't, you're pitying yourself with doubt. That's a weak way to live. If it is there, you're going to do the work. If you're religious, you can rationalize it by understanding that God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't put desires into your heart and makes you incapable of achieving them. If you're not religious, you can still rationalize belief because of the benefits of having an insane self-belief and insane confidence and the downsides of not having it. Not having belief in yourself, there is only downsides. There's no upside. Having belief in yourself, supreme belief in yourself, there's only upside. And we don't think we can rationalize these beliefs. We don't think we can change from doubt to self-doubt because we allow these doubts to circle around in our head and we don't think we can push them out, but we can. And it's that simple. Trying to change from a guy who lacks confidence to a guy who is confident starts with a decision to be confident. 
And then you reinforce that confidence by being disciplined, by doing the work, by doing what you set out to do. And that, in the end, compounds. It has compound interest. Those little victories in the run of a day over 365 days stack up. Over two years, they stack up. Over a decade, you become an entirely different person. But you got to start with belief. You got to do the things. And there's no benefit to not having belief. So you may as well believe that you can do whatever the hell you want to, you set out to do. Because why would you have these desires if you're incapable of doing the thing that you're pursuing? That doesn't make any sense. These desires, the true ones, not the ones that society place on us, exist for a very specific reason because that's what you should pursue. So focus on reinforcing self-belief, self-confidence, and understand the waste and the weakness that is self-doubt. It's fucking pity. That's all it is. It's pity. It's pitying your situation and both confidence, self-belief, and doubt They're self-fulfilling prophecies. If you believe you can do something, you're going to start marching toward that goal. If you don't believe you can do something, you are not going to go marching toward that goal. You're going to die broke, penniless, fat, weak, depressed, and filled with regrets. If you believe in yourself, you're going to find a way to create that thing that you want. So switch your belief. It starts with a decision and not making that decision. The more you don't make that decision, the more you push off your success, push off the life you can live until someday it extends beyond how many years you live. And you're left with the idea that maybe you get to the age of 80 or 75 or 90 or whatever, and you realize after meeting enough successful people that they're no different than you. They just believe they can do the thing. So they pursued it. And imagine having that regret at 80 when there's no more time left or 90 when there's no more time left. When you realize this whole time you wasted your life because you didn't believe you could do the thing that you wanted to do that you believed was your purpose for being here, man, that would be crushing. So change your belief, have self-confidence because there's really no other way to live well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Take care.